it's funny because I say, what did I learn from my parents? But actually it's what I learned not to do. <laughs> so there were so many things that I, I observed that I realized, okay, I want to do these a little bit different. Um, debt was something I wanted to stay far away from even as a kid. So it was really important for me to make sure that I, if I had credit cards that I paid them off on time and, and I had the understanding where you got to have a lot of credit cards in order to build credit. And so I did, I had like eight credit cards by the time I turned 18, I paid them all off every single month, but I realized that wasn't quite the best angle at building my credit, but that, that definitely was, you know, one of those things that I learned almost the hard way. So it was almost like what I didn't learn. <laughs> I think I had different periods in my life where I felt my financial habits needed to change. Um, I think well, I got married at 22 years old. My husband was 24. And so we kind of built our lives together financially. And one of the things that we didn't do was save money. I feel like one of the most important things I did take away from hearing from my dad growing up was living below my means. And so we both came in kind of with that understanding where there were little things where I were like, try to always buy a car used, make sure you try to pay a cash if possible. So we kind of applied some of those things in our 20s. One of the things that we saw the biggest difference was, um, was planning for retirement and looking at mutual funds, to, uh, maxing out our, our Roth IRA and then creating SEP IRAs. That's something we had never done because I think we kept pushing it off and thinking, you know, we're still young, we can do this later, we have time, we have time, we can save that money and use it here or there. And being able to see our statements in the last three years and how much they've grown, it really was like, why didn't we start this earlier? So it was one of those moments where we saw a vast difference in, um, in just planning. I don't know when our exact debt-free date is. Um, I know it's going to be this year. I'm so committed. Uh, we refied our house about four years ago, and we decided to do a 15-year mortgage and we were, we bought our house. Um, it'll be eight years in July. And so I'm like, you know what? We don't owe anything on our cars. We have everything else paid off. We're pretty much debt free. We have two investment properties. Let's do this. Let's tackle our house this year. And so I'm very um, goal oriented. So when I stick my mind to something, I'm literally working my tail off to make sure that we can throw as much towards principal this year to get it paid off and just feel like we're done. One of the biggest tips I can give people that are trying to pay off their home quickly is pay off those debts um, because a home debt is typically a lower interest rate than some of your other things like credit card bills, student loans, anything like that. Um, that was another thing we tackled super early was making sure that we had no student loans, which I know is so cumbersome on my generation. I know that's a very challenging thing, but being able to get rid of that and just even if it takes a little bit of sacrifice, not buying that Starbucks coffee or not, you know, making these purchases that you don't realize really add up. I think it's so huge. Um, is being able to tackle those small things. So then you can start applying it towards, you know, the principal, don't pay the interest, pay the principal off, pay extra every single month or anytime you get any extra money that you're working hard for, just paying that off. So having a child has definitely changed so much of how we even want to incorporate finances into her education, um, making sure that she understands what it looks like to save. We, one of our rental properties is actually going to be her responsibility by the time we feel that she's ready so that she can actually manage it and she can see what it takes to actually have a property operate it, run, what are the expenses, um, how the liabilities come up, you know, what an asset it is. And then we want to make sure that she can track, you know, online banking and understand how that works. So, so much of what we want to do and what we learn is going to affect the way we educate our daughter, which we're really excited about. Financial freedom for me is being debt free is being able to live without nickel and diming or looking at your checking account to make sure that you have enough to do this, being able to take vacations, uh, without worrying about the expenses because you've paid off your house, your cars are paid off. Um, yeah, those are, those are the things that for me means financial freedom is not having to look at my bank account to go grocery shopping or anything like that. But I think that is freedom in and of itself. Hi, I'm Janelle Ferrer and I want you to follow me to financial freedom because it's easier than you think. Thank you.